short answer, and it's, I'm afraid, not up for debate. The data is in. It's going to take a while. Kombucha. Gig spanner. I actually had prepared another video for you today, but thought you'd probably miss the dogs. So I thought I'd have a waffle instead. I recently did a seminar at Edinburgh College and something came out, an insistence, an understanding that I think is really important to share with you. If you're starting out or you're kind of midway through your growth as a professional media composer, and that is to accept the certainty that it's going to take a while. Oh, it's so good. You'll say, yes, 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 I know, I know, 10,000 hours, which is the time the average human takes to get good at something, I believe. And it roughly equates to about five or six years if you're doing it day in, day out. Absolutely applies to the craft of composing, but the thing of building your practice, your business, is going to take longer. And I would say, on average, about 10 years. And I think it's really important to use those 10 years wisely. And for me, that is not getting a job in an unconnected industry that enables you to build a overhead burden because you'll find it so difficult to reverse out of those kind of jobs. I think the best way to spend 10 years is to specialise, to become a specialist in a field of the music business. For someone like Ben Valfish, this was becoming incredibly proficient at orchestration and conducting. His first couple of films that he worked on were for me, which was fantastic because he's really wonderful at what he does. And then he did, I think, eight or nine films with Dario Marinelli. That's how he cut his teeth. That's how he earned his money. And that's how he was able to complete those 10,000 hours, if you will, in a relatively short space of time because he was learning on the job. I became good at programming and making sounds and therefore had the real honour of working with the likes of Anne Dudley, Patrick Doyle, Rupert Gregson-Williams and Harry Gregson-Williams. I was able to learn on the job. It wasn't something that I kind of hobbied at over the weekends. <laughs> So embracing that it's going to take a while is absolutely key because it will set you free. The other thing to understand is that by determining your destination and the journey you're going to take, you are restricting your opportunities. Our strength as human beings is to be adaptable, not to be completely in a rut. And what I see time and time again in people who are relatively new to the business is a growing resentment that things aren't working out as they had expected. I'm sure you've heard the saying, how do you make God laugh? Well, you tell him your plans. And I think in so doing, in embracing the uncertainty of the future, embracing that it's going to be unexpected and that it's going to be a long journey, you will also find joy. One of my theories about life is a life spent trying to live forever is not a life worth living. Destination is oblivion. We are not in a comedy, we're in a tragedy. So it's imperative that you enjoy the journey and take whatever comes your way. I became resentful. This is shortly before creating this vlog. I became resentful about my job for, I, th I guess, a different reason, really. And that was, I felt I'd reached my destination and I didn't like it. I remember, I think, even saying into this camera, I was going to make a mug that said, I took the two greatest loves of my life, music and film, and turned them into a fucking job. Well, what I've done over the last four or five years, which totally coincides with this channel, is I've managed to remove just one letter from that word and replace it with a Y. Because I've discovered that by not thinking of what I do as a job, but my joy, that in itself has set me free. I'm repeating myself, but as Quincy Jones once said, when money enters the room, God leaves. That's two God analogies that this atheist has uttered in this waffle. And I guess I've taken the commercial imperative out of my job. 
And I know it's easy to say, well, it's easy for you to say you're obviously doing well for yourself and stuff. It's yes, by not doing my job, by setting up this thing called Spitfire, which now pays me a salary. It has removed the commercial imperative and therefore it is no longer my job. It is simply what I enjoy the most. Spitfire Audio is a testament to people who love making music and they're in the music business and they're possibly not headlining Glastonbury, but they're able to maintain that joy and love for what it is they love. It's kind of like the RAF. I don't know the numbers, but I expect that the number of people in the RAF is enormous. The number of pilots in the RAF is probably minutely small. But all of those people, I'm sure, have an interest in aircraft. I know many music editors who then become composers. They didn't say, well, I didn't get into composing to become a music editor, like it was some lowly position. I was talking to a really big, I mean, huge producer recently in Los Angeles, and I asked him the typical question of, you know, if you could go back and tell yourself something, what would it be? And he said, well, I wouldn't really be telling myself anything because it's something that I've done. But what I say to other people is don't give up. And the simple reason for that is because most people do. Hierarchies form not through some cruel fate of the human condition, but simply some people just keep on going. And by keep on going, you will just get better at what you do. I know people who started out and weren't particularly good composers, and you will get better the more you will do. You will surpass that 10,000 hours, those 20,000 hours. But more importantly, most people give up and what will make you unique is not doing that. So I mentioned earlier that the data is in. Whilst my research may be unscientific, it is accidentally thorough. I have, in this position in Spitfire Audio, had the opportunity to meet most successful composers and thousands of professional composers. And there is simply no exception. There's no such thing as an overnight success in what we do. And whilst composers may seem to be getting younger, it's simply because they're starting younger. People didn't compose in their bedrooms when I was composing in my bedroom. There are a few 50-year-olds who have been using samplers for 34 years now. There have been many points at which I thought of giving up, but the point at which I became a dad was a really wonderful turn of fate because it was the point at which I had to accept that my life was in composing. And that's when it kind of started going downhill a bit, when it became a necessity, a job, not just an ambition, a love. I hope this hasn't come across as being a, a negative monologue. I want to end on something really, really positive. If you fully embrace that it's going to be a long journey possibly never ending, if you fully embrace that it is going to be unexpected and surprising, you will then prepare for the unexpected. If you learn from your mistakes and don't blame others for them, then you will grow and you will experience misfortune. And misfortune will strengthen you and make you carve a path that eventually leads to less misfortune. A lot of people say you have to accept that you're lucky. And it's like, yes, I am lucky. But what I did by keep on going is increased my chances. So if you embrace this with a warm embrace, accept the unexpected and use your misfortune as a valuable lesson and don't blame the industry for it, then I do think you will find joy, you will find your bliss. One other interesting bit of unscientific data. I'm yet to meet a successful composer who doesn't, at some point, early in the conversation, mention another composer that has helped them. Whether it be Trevor Horn for Anne Dudley, Hans Zimmer for Harry Gregson Williams, or indeed Harry Gregson Williams for me. We are not competitors. We support each other. We're part of the infrastructure of a successful industry. So whilst you're forging on, and not giving up. Also make sure that you don't remain a hermit. Get out there and meet other people that are doing this because they will help you. 
the data's in. Thanks so much for watching and putting up with me to the end. So what was that video that I made? Well, if you subscribe and ding that bell, you will receive a notification of a video where I introduce you to this. So well worth um, tuning in for. One of those for our industry and best of luck. Just embrace that it's gonna take a while and it may not turn out as you expect it. But surely that's what makes life interesting. See you next time. Kombucha, oolong, the floral one, lovely. Isn't it Oscar? <laughs>